Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to illustrate how to add fractions together when you have more than two of them. In this case, we're going to add three fractions together. And notice that the denominators are not the same, which means we simply just can't add the numerators together. We need to find the lowest common denominator. Now, in our first example, look at the three denominators. All three of them are a prime number. If all three of them are a prime number, you simply have to multiply them all together to find the lowest common denominator. For, so for example 1, we can say that the LCD is simply equal to 5 times 3 times 2, which is equal to 30. Which means we're going to write the fractions with the new denominators. They all will have the common denominator of 30, 30, and 30. So the question now is, what did I have to do to the number 5 here, denominator 5, to turn into a 30? I have to multiply 5 times 6 to turn into 30, which means we also have to multiply the numerator times 6. And let me use a different color so that nothing has changed. But in other words, 5 times 6 is 30. Therefore, I must also multiply the numerator by 6 to get 30. What about 3? I have to multiply 3 times 10 to get 30, which means I also have to multiply the numerator by 10 to get 30 as well. So 1 times 10. So we multiply the denominator times 10. We must multiply the numerator times 10. And here, to get from a 2 to 30, I have to multiply the denominator times 2, which means I also have to multiply the numerator times 2. Here I get 1. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to multiply the denominator times 15, so I have to also multiply the numerator times 15, which means now we end up with 2 times 6, which is 12, divided by 30, plus 1 times 10, which is 10, divided by 30, plus 1 times 15, which is 15, divided by 30, and now we can add up all the numerators because all the denominators are the same. 12 plus 10 is 22, plus 15, that would be 37 divided by 30, and we'll just leave it as an improper fraction. On the second example, notice they're not all prime numbers. The first two ones are, but not the third one, which means that the LCD can be found as follows. The LCD can be found by taking the number 5 and saying, well, I can just only write that as a prime number. The number 3 can also, be, also only be written as a prime number, but 10 can be divided by 2 to give me 5, which means that 10 is equal to 2 times 5. Notice, since we already have a 5, I don't need to use this 5 right here. I have a 3 here, and I have a 2 there, which means that the lowest common denominator is going to be a product of 5 times 3 times 2. We don't have to repeat this 5 here because we already have one 5. The lowest common denominator can be found by saying 5 times 3 times 2. Well, 5 times 3 times 2 is 30, which means we have the same common denominator as we had before. To go to 30, and let me illustrate what we did. So 5 times 6 will give me 30, which means, well, let me just use it in red, write it in red. 5 times 6 is 30, which means I also have to multiply the numerator by 6. Plus, here we have to multiply this times 10, and plus this has to be multiplied times 3 to get 30. Again, let me illustrate. 5 times 6 is 30, so we also have to multiply the numerator by 6. 3 times 10 is 30, so we have to multiply the numerator times 10. And 10 times 3 is 30, which means we have to multiply the numerator times 10. I have to get every fraction with the same common denominator, the same lowest common denominator, which is 30, and therefore I have to multiply the first one by 6, the second one by 10, and the third one by 3 to get 30 in the denominator. But of course, we must do exactly the same to the numerator, which means that here we get 12 over 30 plus 10 over 30 plus 21 over 30. Now that all the fractions have the same denominator, I simply just have to add the numerators. 12 plus 10 is 22, plus 21 is 43 over 30, and that is the result of adding those three fractions. Taking a look over here, again, we need to find the lowest common denominator. We need to express each of the denominators as a product of their factors. So 
So for the third example, we have three numbers. The number three is a prime number, so we can't do anything with that. But the number eight can be divided by two, which gives me four, can be divided by two, which gives me two, which means that eight can be written as two times two times two. The number, th the number six can be divided by two to get three. In other words, six can be written as two times three. We look at each of the three denominators. The first denominator is the number three, so we have to take that one. The number eight can be divided into the product of two times two times two. The number six can be found by multiplying two times three, but since we already have used a three, we don't need to use it again, and we have used at least one two, so we don't have to use that again. So we don't have to include any of the factors of the third denominator, which means that the lowest common denominator is simply equal to 3 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is equal to 24. Coming over here, we now know that we have 5 eighths plus 1 sixth plus 2 thirds. And notice for the first fraction, to get 24, I have to multiply the denominator times 3, which means I have to multiply the numerator times 3 as well. For the second fraction, to get 6 to be 24, I need to multiply the 6 times 4, because 6 times 4 is 24. I must also multiply the numerator times 4. And the third fraction, I must multiply this by 8 to get 24, which means I have to multiply the numerator times 8 as well. Now when I've worked this out, I end up with... 15 over 24 plus 4 over 24 plus 16 over 24. Notice that all three fractions now have a common denominator of 24, so I can add the numerators together. 4 plus 16 is 20, add to 15 gives me 35 divided by 24. And finally, the last one, notice that, again, I have three denominators, none of them are prime numbers, which means I have to write each of the three denominators as a product of their factors. So for the last example, we take the first number, which is the number 12, which is divisible by 2, which gives me 6, which is divisible by 2, which gives me 3. 12 can be written as 2 times 2 times 3. The next example, we have 16, can be divided by 2, which is 8, divided by 2, which is 4, can be divided by 2, which is 2 which means that 16 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And finally, the number 8. The number 8 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 because uh, I can see that right there. Notice that in the first number with the number 12, I have 1, 3. I have no 3s anywhere else. And here the number 16, I have 4 2s, which is the most that the number 2, two appears anywhere, which means that the lowest common denominator can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, which is equal to 48. Because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16, and 16 times 3 is 48, which means the denominators all have to be 48. I end up, I start out with 5 over 12, with 3 over 16, and with 1 over 8. Notice 12 goes into 48 four times, in other words, if I multiply 12 by 4, I get 48, which means I must multiply the numerator by 4 as well. 16 goes into 48 three times, so I must multiply the denominator times 3, which means I must multiply the numerator by 3 as well. 3 times 16 is 48, so I get the proper lowest common denominator. 8 goes into 48 six times, I must multiply the denominator times 6, and I must multiply the numerator times 6 as well. Notice now that when I work this out, all three fractions will have the same common denominator. 5 times 4 is 20 divided by 4 times 12 is 48, plus 9 divided by 48, plus 6 divided by 48. Notice how all three fractions now have the same common denominator. I can simply now add the numerators together. 9 plus 6 is 15, add to 20 is 35 divided by 48. And that's how you sum up fractions that have different denominators, especially when you have three of them, you must find the lowest common denominator by either multiplying all denominators together or by finding the lowest common denominator by writing each of the denominators as the product of their factors. Of course, 5 and 3 are prime numbers, and 10 can be written as 2 and 5. 
find all the prime numbers that occur the most. You only have one, two, one, three, and one, five. You don't have to take duplicates, so that's the lowest common denominator. Here we have three, eight, and six. Three is a prime number. Eight can be written as two times two times two. Six can be written as two times three. You already have one three here, so you don't need this one. You already have three twos there, so you don't need this one. The lowest common denominator is the product of those two. Here in this example, 12 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2, 16 as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and 8 as 2 times 2 times 2. 3 only appears once, so you need that in your lowest common denominator, and 2 appears 4 times here, so you need all 4 of them. You can skip those 2 and skip those 3 because you already have 4 of them. The lowest common denominator is the product of those 5 numbers. And that's how we add fractions that do not have the same common denominator.